Good morning, everybody, from me and Peppers coming up here to say hi as well. I am so congested this morning. I think allergies are hitting me. But come with me to move a pivot for a guy who is spraying one of our fields. Pepper, unfortunately, cannot come with. She's sitting this one out. But I'm grabbing our jump pack here because he said he tried starting it and it didn't work. So I'm going to do a jump pack. I've got a water and a roll of toilet paper for tissues. If I need anything beyond those things, we have bigger problems at hand. I know in the last video, this blue Jeep up on the lift got a lot of comments and questions, but uh, I will let Grant tell you. I'm just going to let him explain this to you. It is currently about 7.30 in the morning. They started spraying this field, or we're going to start spraying this field yesterday, but I think they had a hydraulic line issue on their sprayer. So they quit, went home, and I guess they're hitting it bright and early this morning. We're gonna take the blue Jeep. It's one of my favorite irrigating rigs. Last time we drove this thing was in Utah. <laughs> Can you tell? So it's gonna sound weird, but I'm really glad that the Jeep shut off because the last time I was driving the Jeep and I pulled the key out, it kept running, which I don't know how that's possible. So I'm really glad that that shut off. It's actually a beautiful morning. I don't know if you guys can see the sprayer operator way down there at the other end of the field, but here is what we're working with. We need to get this power unit started. We are just moving the pivot. No water is being ran. That's why the PTO shaft is unhooked. We just need to get this started up, open this box and get the pivot moving for them. This battery jump box comes in handy like every single day. We use this thing an unreal amount. Folks. <laughs> so I'm going to flash you guys back to the last video I posted where I said that Grant is a notorious battery bandit. <laughs> Instead of just spending the money going out and buying a couple new batteries, this happens every year. He will rob a battery out of a pickup truck, <laughs> off an irrigation motor, pretty much anywhere that doesn't need a battery. And so I have a feeling that this tractor might get its battery robbed off of it. I got a call from the sprayer operator who said that he tried to figure out how to move the pivot and it just wasn't working. Follow me. Yeah, that would definitely explain why it's not working. There is no battery out here. That also definitely explains why he could not get it started. Need a battery to start an engine. So instead of going back home and getting a battery, I am going to try to run it off the jump pack. Cause you just need battery to get it started, right? It's got an alternator, so it starts producing its own power. At least that's, that's right, right? I have never done this before. Connect black to black, red to red, and 12 volts. Let's see if this works. Make sure my hair is back, even though there's no PTO shaft hooked up. Just wanna be extra safe. And it is on start. And my panel box is on start. So let's. I think a mouse nest exploded in there. Pivot is moving and he is able to continue on his way. We haven't planted anything yet. There's no crop out here, but we're just doing a pre-emergent spray because we do not want any weed pressure stealing nutrients or water or sunlight away from our baby little seeds that we're going to be planting soon. Now on to the next job and it also has to do with pivots.
might be wondering, what is this palette? It's kind of wrapped up, it's a little mysterious. Well, if you've been watching the videos and you see that 10 second shot of a pivot, and then you see the logo for UMC, which stands for Universal Motion Components. They are a world leading supplier of pivot powertrain parts, but they have supplied us with a pallet full of powertrain parts, specifically gearboxes, which that's that thing right there. And that is what we are going to be using this afternoon. Well, let's see what we've got in this thing. I think a lot of girls would get excited about packages full of like clothes or maybe new shoes or kitchen gadgets, but you know, it gets me excited. A pallet full of pivot powertrain parts. Say that five times fast. So today we are going out to change a gearbox and we are going to be doing that using our trusty pivot servicing rig. Now, if you've been around the channel for a while, you will remember that this was not always the pivot servicing rig. This is the truck that moved me into and out of college. Yes, me, Grant, and all of my stuff fit in this single cab long box. We have also taken this truck on a couple different dirt biking trips, but since we have upgraded our pickup trucks, we have promoted this truck to being our pivot servicing rig. It also works great for running things to and from job sites. So Grant has spent years working on this setup. Before we farmed together, he would service pivots for area farmers, and he has kind of perfected his setup. We've got an air compressor, a pump with a barrel full of oil, two hose reels, one for air, and then one for the oil that we're going to be filling up the center drives and gearboxes with, and then also a little toolbox that is usually more stocked with tools, but ready for anything you might encounter. Then also grease and a grease gun for greasing the center points. I know all of that might have sounded a little bit overwhelming, but I promise it's really not that tricky and it'll make a lot more sense once we get out to the pivot. If you're new to the channel, we have two buildings on our property. We call this the shop here. This is the heated building. This is where we do all of our maintenance and we keep things like right now the planter is in there. And then we have this building. We call this the machine shed. This is not heated, it's cold storage, rock, dirt floor. And this is where we keep stuff when we're not using it. So the seed tender, that'll be coming out soon. The fuel trailer, that'll be coming out soon. But behind us, we've got our semi trucks. We've got the corn head, the bean head. Um, anything we're not using is kept in this cold storage here. So first thing we're gonna have to take off the pallet are these booster pumps. These are for the end guns. That's just sitting on the very end of the pivot and helps spray water out, but we don't need those today. We'll probably be using those later on into the irrigating season, more like midsummer. This is a pretty decent piece of wood. Keep Save that. that for later. Then we've got our couplers or knuckles, joints, and you'll see those when we get out to the pivot point. We're gonna have to be taking one of those off today. Then we have our center drives. All of these parts are so heavy. That's why I'm very grateful that we're doing this job now. And when it's this beautiful day and we can drive the pickup right out to our broken gearbox instead of midsummer when the corn is way above our heads and it's 90 degrees and you have to walk all of those parts out there. This is a way better time to be doing servicing and maintenance. This is what we're taking out to the field, this gearbox. It's actually might be even heavier than the center tracks. It's, they're definitely heavier. This is why you go to the gym, folks. This is also why I will not be doing this job by myself. Luckily, I have my, luck, my lovely assistant Gage here to help me because this is not a one-person job. Let's see. Looks like another table that needs to be organized. Does this seem like a familiar sight to anybody? I'm going to be grabbing this impact here. Hopefully we have a charged battery for it somewhere. Why does it feel like you clean up a shop for then the next day it to be just absolutely destroyed again? I don't, I don't know what happens. All right, we gathered some supplies. We have the inch impact. We have a grease gun. We have the other impact. We got a sawzall. We've got some couplers and a sledgehammer. 
And then we also have a socket set for the impact. So hopefully we won't need anything else other than that. If we do, I'll be concerned. Uh, you may have noticed that we're not packing a jack and that's because I'm gonna have Gage drive the telehandler out and we're just going to lift the pivot up with the telehandler. I think that's gonna be the safest option. Also grabbing a camera stand so that both of us can actually work and not film and gloves. Dad, do you remember when we decorated my gloves that one summer? All right, guys, let's go out to the pivot. When we bought this pickup, it came with this part of the steering wheel just completely wore off. And I just can't help but imagine an old farmer driving around with one hand all of the time and just wearing a hole literally through the rubber on his steering wheel. So we're out at the pivot. You guys may have seen these driving along the interstate, driving down a country road, or perhaps if you uh, do the more flyover state route, you will see these are the culprits of crop circles. So each tower has two tires. We're looking at this one in particular. This is the gearbox. Now, it's supposed to be full of oil. But if you go under here, Gage was servicing this pivot and he was like, huh, that's interesting. There is no plug, meaning that at some point all of the oil has drained out of this. That is not good. That is a recipe for disaster later on in the irrigating season. So we are going to be taking this tire off, removing this gearbox and replacing it with a new one. It looks like a pretty old one anyways. You guys are going to see a drastic difference between this one and the one we're going to be putting on. You might be wondering, what in the world is an N95 mask doing on this pivot? Well, that is because that's what we used to mark this specific tower and this specific gearbox. Because this is just one pivot. I believe we run about 25 pivots and they all kind of start to look the same after a while. So that is our marking device right there. I'm gonna have Gage readjust to the other side to lift up, giving us a little bit more room to work over here. There's those end guns that I was talking about earlier with the booster pumps. We'll be working with those later on in this year. Perfect, right there. That's way easier than a handyman jack. Now we get to start breaking out our supplies. Here is step one, the monster. There is something just like so massive and like overly aggressive about it. Probably maybe a little bit overkill for this job, but I'll take any excuse to use this thing. Wow. Like nothing. That took absolutely zero effort at all. Hey, don't let me forget, I left all of the nuts in this very safe location right here on the ground. Just remind me in like 10 minutes. So you pull that cover back and this is the knuckle joint coupler, whatever you wanna call it. This is a very old style. It has a very brittle puck in the middle, lots of very tiny bolts. Let me go grab a new one and compare the two while we remove this one. Just look at the difference purely in build between the two of these. Now, I know this one is clean, literally just came out of the box, but when I tell you that this thing is built to last, it's also just so easy to install. I have to say, gaining UMC as a channel sponsor is one of the best things that I did because I truly have been using their parts for years. So when they reached out and wanted to partner with my channel, I was beyond happy because I've been using their parts. I have nothing but good things to say and they have just been amazing to work with. The other nice thing about using the JLG is it just kind of gives you a handy little workbench right there. Way better than Handyman Jack. You might be wondering, Laura, Sawzall? Really? A bit much for this job, huh? Well, not when you are working with the tiniest of old bolts that just round so quickly. That's where this is gonna come in handy. Oh, 
Oh, my hand. <laughs> I can't believe that worked. Did you guys know that all screwdrivers, especially flathead ones, are wedges and are definitely meant to be used as such? There you go, folks. She's off. Just took all the tools we brought. So a, a lot of persuasion. Ooh. Now, that just slides off like that. Look at that. This one goes on so much better. Check out this. Woo! Brand I spanking I don't new. think any of these have ever been no, used. No, this is first this time. This is brand new. Don't tell Grant. We robbed this out of the fuel trailer. And we have to remember to put it back because I think think he really wants this in the fuel trailer for when we need it but you gotta break it in eventually i mean what's the point of having something like this if you never use it exactly you have to use it eventually yeah all right let's get back to it taking this gearbox off i think we're done with the sawzall or should be hopefully we gotta figure yeah, this one out first that one's gonna be a bugger um why does it look like you just lift up well it probably do but i mean it's still gonna be tight i think it's Probably. For, yeah, I'll be able to pick it up. Okay. Well, let's just, just start. Let's just start with these bottom ones and yeah. see where we can get on that. Okay. Three for three. Maybe. Do we have a wrench that's that size? If we could just try and like loosen it up a little bit. I say three quarter. Yeah. So what we're struggling with here, just have grace. Keep in mind, I haven't done this for like a year is how do we get that We shall see. Looks like somebody bent it up a little bit with something. Here, try this one. Nice catch. Thank you. Try this three quarter. Caught it again? Who am I? I'm gonna tap it. Don't bust your knuckle. Yeah, I know, that's what I'm thinking about. Ready? Yeah. Yeah, that's not doing anything at all. Come on, Laura. Well then, should we just try to take that one out? Because it'll hang off this bolt like yeah. we're fine. Hmm. How? I don't even know how I'm, to I'm like my enigma right now. Like, I don't even understand. I don't even know what that means. Enigma? Enigma. Enig enigma? Yeah, like problem I cannot solve. Oh, I just call that a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that must be on there tight it might, yeah I, I don't know how you get it in there tight though i mean you'd have to use a wrench but then the wrench should break it loose if it's just that tight but sitting underwater all the time getting in there corroded and rusted I guess. in there there must be a simple explanation to this problem because there's such a small space between there like, why couldn't they have gone like an inch or two lower that's, and you would have been able to get to all the bolts? Why does such a small piece of metal ruin my day every day? No worky worky. No do what meant to do. No do. Nope. God, I just don't want to like strip it. You know? So we did a quick FaceTime to my father and he shed some light on the situation. We're not missing something, but he did give us another list of supplies for things that we needed to go get. So should... Fingers crossed, be able to get it now. Ah! It's, it's, I don't know who put it in there. They put it in there tight. Fools. Fools. Unless. I'm FaceTime and dad again. <laughs> So, after another FaceTime with Dad, Dad, you're so, so smart. I do not know what I would do without you. FaceTimed him, and he was like, well, if the bolt isn't going to move, just move the gearbox. So, we started hitting the gearbox. Gage, could you show the audience, please? Yes. I the bolt is so tight, it stays in place, and the gearbox spins. Look at that. So, with just a, boy, it can't be turned that much can't try I it bet it's one more. more. It's just gonna flop down. Well, should we try it out? Okay, just ready. Here we go. 
Oh, Ooh. it caught. <laughs> okay, but the bolt is spinning. Oh, but now surely we've got enough room to lift it up, right? Yeah, probably. Oh, like, do you think I could spin it with a wrench now? Yeah, try it. Oh, look at that. The wind may have picked up just a tad bit. This convenience. There we go. So now that there's some pressure off of it, Gage can pick up on it and I can actually spin the bolt now. There we go. Almost at, oh, look at that. Free! Yay! Victory! Awesome. Ooh. There is a small point there where I seriously lost hope. I'll yeah. be honest. Thanks for thanks, Kim. I was sitting, I was sitting right here, and I was like, "What in the world are we gonna do?" And Gage goes, "We should call your dad." <sighs> thanks, Dad. I would still be sitting here if it wasn't for you. We okay. Would definitely still be sitting here. Now, finally, we get to the fun part, where we get to put the new gearbox on. Now we get to be the ones that put that little bolt here to hold it. Okay. Can you move the washer, please? Yep. Here we go, come down. Okay. Is that lined up? Go down. There. Down. A little bit more. Right there. <sighs> Whew. We got it. Yep. It's not so bad. Not bad. We're yeah. trying to make this look really, really easy for you guys. Definitely. We do this every single day. We're pros, obviously. Okay, yeah, we're definitely pros. I do that. I'm gonna try to get that little sleeve off. Okay. Then you could also, after you work on that, you could get the uh, other bolts off. Yeah, see, look at that. Take there notes, other person that put this on. Look at that. So sleeve comes off. Don't forget to check the oil level before you make it operational. Now, once we get these tightened up, we can connect the drive shaft and put the tire back on. Well, that's not going anywhere. Oh, that is probably, it must be different. That's, that's a half inch drive. <laughs> What am I doing? She's got so much going on. There is so much going on. We have a very messy workstation right now. But we're getting the job done. But we are getting the job done. Time to connect our knuckle. So you see it just fits right in there. First you want to slide it on this side. Oh, though. yeah. There obviously. you go, <laughs> yep. Slide it in this side, and that lines up right there. And then you just set that in, and it'll line up. No pressure, Gage. No pressure. There's just millions of people watching you do this. Oh, no. Boom. Oh, I'm such an idiot. You don't need me to hold these. They're carriage oh, bolts. Oh yeah, they're carriage bolts. That's my bad. <laughs> good. I just heard the, I was like, wait, why am I doing this right now? Sorry. That's why the UMC knuckles are superior because they have carriage bolts. <laughs> Definitely. We are finally to the point where we can put the tire back on. But first, I think we better do just like a little bit of workstation cleanup because things have gotten a bit out of control. So we're gonna pick up our things so that we don't forget anything then put the tire back on and wrap this up. There you go, folks. Gage is moving the forks closer and is gonna drive that old gearbox home. But that is a successful gearbox, knuckle, and tire change. But the day is not over yet. Before we can call it quits, Gage and I have a tire to change. Grabbed a pivot tire from our stockpile 
and are headed out to change the pivot tire. This is going to be our last job for the day. Age, do you say root or root? Root. You say root? Everybody yeah. Say root. Everybody says root. Root? Root? Can you imagine saying root? 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 I don't know. No, no. Root it's a up. like that. That is a tree root right there. Everyone was making fun of me. It's a tree root. That's a root. <laughs> and for everyone who is saying, well, how do you say boot? Obviously, I say boot, but think about the words cough and dough. These things are spelled the same way, but you say them totally differently. It just makes sense for me to say rut. That's what I think. Personal opinion, I guess. Maybe that's the Midwesterner in me. All right, Gage, so what happened? You're out servicing pivots and just yeah. find this? So I'm out servicing pivots and I'm driving up here and I, I noticed the pivots like tilted a lot. So I'm like, well, that's not good either. It's stuck or it's off the tires off the bead. I'm like, I get up here, I'm like, holy crap. It's, it's, it's obviously been ran like this for a while. Who knows if it's happened mid summer or late summer before harvest, but. It survived. It survived. But just barely. I mean, that is just shredded there. Thank, thank, let it a flat field. Otherwise it definitely would have got stuck because it's not doing anything. You are so right. Need to get this old tire off, put the new tire on. So I didn't time it, but if I had to guess, that was one of my faster pivot tire changes I have ever completed. Now, of course, it feels a little bit like we're cheating because we could just drive the pickup and the tires straight out there, but I'm so glad that we're able to complete these fixes now instead of waiting till the middle of the season. But inevitably something like this is bound to go wrong. And if you wanna see what that looks like, click on this video right here because things do not always go this smoothly. So if you wanna see how things look normally, you're gonna to wanna to click right there. Thank you so much for watching today's video, coming along with me and Gage as we complete these tasks around the farm. We are learning right alongside of you guys. I will never claim to be an expert. So thank you for watching and we will see you in the next one. Bye.